Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Avorian episode 50. I'm an Igneous and today we're starting our station, the, the station build. I had a name for the station and I've forgotten it already. It's entered into the game, but it's not entered into my brain apparently at this point, but we'll get to that when we get to that. We talked about in the last episode, we would either be doing a carrier or a station and whichever one we did first, we would do the other one second. So we'll be doing the station now and we'll be doing a carrier after. In this case, I decided to do the carrier, or sorry, the station first because it seemed like we're in a spot now where it would be useful to have a little bit of static support somewhere in the universe. Um, and a station seems like the best way to do that. If we start building a fleet, um, depending on how well the station uh, is capable of defending itself, might extend to defending any ships that we have parked near the station, etc., etc and make it more viable to pr proceed with that whole sort of fleet building kind of scenario and not have to worry too much about our ships sitting um, sitting ducks basically and taking a lot of damage and potentially being destroyed. The main thing realistically about building a station uh, for me is the function of the station um, followed by the aesthetic and the aesthetic for me with um, any kind of station that I build usually starts off round. The, if I'm going to do more than one station, then maybe that will change. Maybe it won't be so round for future iterations. But for the first one, it usually ends up being a lot of circles. And I'm completely okay with that. I, I like it. I know it's a little bit cliche. But in this game in particular, where everything tends to be a conglomeration of cubes and rectangles, um, having something that's very round makes it sort of stand out against the rest of the universe and I'm very much okay with that. So I decided that uh, circles would be the order of the day and in this case I wasn't actually able to use my go-to uh, circle layout tool plots.co.uk because it has a limit of 256 blocks in any direction and on any axis which was too small for the station, this first circle that we're laying in now uh, is 300 blocks in diameter. And then we're going to have, or we're going to do the layout for two more circles farther away from the station, I think sort of like an orbiting ring that will be uh, 600 and 660 blocks in diameter respectively, which is way too big for plot. So I did find a utility. Uh, I don't have the name off the top of my head for what utility I used and I'm not even certain that I still have easy access to this site um, but there's a lot of different um, utilities that you can use for doing voxel layouts and it's not necessarily difficult to find them if you're looking for something in particular and we find one and it doesn't do what you need you can look around and probably find one that does it's just enough of them that it's not that big of a problem you can see we're going to be uh, under fire through a lot of this process. We're in creative mode, the station is invincible, our nearby ship is invincible, so we're not really too worried about the damage that we take, but there's, there's gonna be a point where a ship collides with our station fairly early on in the process. We don't have a lot of mass to the station yet, and it just sends the station for a bit of a tumble, which I thought was kind of amusing, albeit a bit confusing at first, because I didn't realize that stations could actually be moved as a result of collisions, who knew? Realistically speaking, one of the, the things that could really be a downside for this kind of build when we're talking about particularly circles and round things of very large sizes, uh, spe specifically with the block count, they, they can be very, very small blocks and not really cover a lot of area, but because there's a lot of blocks, it can take a very, very long time to do the layout and it can do a very take a very, very long time to build anything from that layout uh, without making use of some of the tools that the game already provides. So things like the copy and paste function, which I know is there but haven't really made much use of in the past because my ships haven't been symmetrical enough for it to really stand out as an option. In this case, very much an option. <laughs> the copy and paste is going to save a lot of time and in ways that I hadn't even really given a lot of thought to in the past until I find myself in a situation where I'm doing something very very repetitive 
and I realize that I'm getting a little bit tired of doing it, and then I start to think in terms of what could I do to make this a little bit easier. That's what it takes for me, is I have to get sick of it before I start thinking about alternatives that would make it a little bit easier, but the copy and the paste is definitely going to be an asset for this build, as well as being able to set aside those um, preset shapes and then call upon those if you want to do things in a modular way and kind of repeat certain sections as you're putting it together. The benefit there is because if you're just using the copy and paste, it means you have to select everything every time to copy and paste. And the more complicated it gets, the larger it gets, the harder it becomes to select just the specific blocks that you want for a particular section in order to duplicate. So being able to set aside those shapes just after you finish creating them so that you don't have to worry about separating things out later on to select just the blocks that you want is also likely to be a tremendous asset. What I can tell you is by the end of this specific video, the block count for this station will already be over 20,000 blocks. It'll be somewhere in the range of blocks that the Serpo Vectum is comprised of, which is kind of crazy. We were actually just over 30,000 blocks, but I, I did one of the select all and merge kinds of things, and that knocked off about 10,000 blocks from the total, but we're quite a ways from actually being done with the ship or with the station based on the size that it's going to be in the end. So I'm a little bit leery of what that's going to um, cause by way of performance headaches, but I'll try and keep an eye on it and not, you know, commit myself to a size that's just not going to be practical. I'm making this entire station out of Xanian, which is the material after Trinium, which is what we used for the Serpo Vectum. I didn't realize when I started using it that it doesn't have any armor blocks or if it does have armor blocks you're not allowed to use them on stations that's a thought that kind of crossed my mind is maybe they do have armor blocks but you're not allowed to use them on stations suffice it to say I looked very very closely as I was trying to select the blocks to put on my hotbar and I didn't find any Xanian armor blocks when we were in build mode for the station so there won't be armor blocks there'll be just regular Xanian hull blocks for the majority of the build and i'm not too concerned about it because we will have structural integrity fields and shields unless for whatever reason those aren't available either but there will be other things that will allow us to make the ship more robust we don't have to worry so much necessarily about um you know that mainstay of using armor blocks and then building everything off of that the ship or sorry this i keep calling it a ship the station that we're building is uh, a research station. The reason being, uh, with all of the stuff that I do in creative, building the ships, testing the ships, um, if I want different systems, if I want different turrets to test with the, the ships that I'm testing, I just use the, the dev menu to make that happen. The difficulty with that is that I, I can't really do that in a survival sort of setting. So it would be nice to have a station that could help us a little bit with, first of all, being able to duplicate the things that we get that we like. So we'll have the opportunity to do that, hopefully, with the research station. There are all kinds of different stations we can build, and this is the one that we chose. You see here, I just started setting up the copy-paste, taking the 2D layout and basically pasting that layout on top of itself repeatedly in order to create a 3d sort of shape and then after we've done it a few times then we select the whole thing again and then copy and paste and as a result it, it's very very quick and easy to add some dimension to the project and you kind of get a sense of the scale that we're working with uh, and the various different shapes and things of that nature but what I found is that it's very very um, hard for the game to take something of this size, this many blocks, with all three um, mirror modes turned on and trying to copy and paste the entire thing on top of it, it's doing too much math, I think. It's thinking too hard, trying to make all of these different mirrored things work. So if you find yourself in that situation, you've been building with all three mirror axes on, and then you want to copy and paste everything that you've been working on and it's very very slow turn off all the mirror modes and just 
just do it with one. It works much better that way. And like you've seen me do uh, so many times in the past, we start off with primarily squares and rectangles, doing the layout, getting things sort of roughed in, and then we go around with the slope blocks to smooth things off and come up with uh, a more finished kind of look to it. And one of the things that I realized that I, I kind of like is all of these little yellow th things on the, the texture of the hull that you're seeing are just part of the material. They aren't anything that I've chosen to place specifically, but they add a little bit of um, visual interest to the, the station, which I think is good because I haven't even decided whether or not I want to uh, paint it yet. It's way too early in the process to decide, but given how large the station is going to be, it's kind of nice to know that even if I do decide not to paint it, there's going to be something on there that's going to add a little bit of visual interest that we can uh, take advantage of without requiring a whole lot of extra work. So one of the, the last things that I wanted to work on in this early sort of layout phase for this particular segment of the station was some supporting elements that are just very small. Like they kind of give you the sense that they're just sort of reinforcing what's already there. We've got some fairly beefy structural elements that are holding the outer ring to the central cylinder but I wanted to have that those spaces in between sort of filled in with these sort of struts and things of that nature. So you can see we're just basically putting things into place uh, and I'm kind of smoothing them off as I go. You'll see as we kind of get a general idea of where things are going to be, then we come back and we smooth off the edges because when dealing with things of this size, they're little narrow skinny bits, once you get the general position roughed in and then you start adding the blocks that are necessary to smooth it off and give it that finished look, the scale means that sometimes adding those extra blocks makes it look a lot larger than you really anticipated. So it made sense in this case to spend a little bit of time with the different elements as we were putting them in place to kind of round them off a little bit instead of leaving it for later just so that we can have as close to a realistic interpretation of the, the actual finished size as we can get at this stage. And then uh, also very useful, you can see we go along and we add, count off a certain number of blocks and then we add a block and then we count off the same number so that when we want to measure off of these structures, it's much quicker and easier because we can count in larger lots. If I start counting something that's a hundred blocks and I'm not marking it off, say every 10 blocks, I lose count almost every single time. It's kind of a waste. So that was what drove me to get in the habit of making these little markers so that I can keep track of things. And then the added benefit down the line is that they're there until you remove them so you can count easier, faster and easier any other time that you need to get a measurement off of a particular part of the structure. So very useful thing to do. And then one of the things uh, that I started to do that I'll probably show at some point later in this particular build series is uh, the tip that people have offered in the past about using holographic blocks so that you can make blocks overlap in ways that otherwise would be disallowed. I'm not 100% confident that I like doing it this way because I'm still a little bit nervous that I'm going to log in one day, sign into the game and find out with the patch notes that that has been removed. It was never intended to be that way and now it's disallowed because you never know what that's going to do to the finished builds that use that method. But for now, it's a good way to kind of get things looking the way that they're supposed to look. When we've got all these different things that are intersecting at so many different angles, getting things to intersect and look decent in that intersection is sometimes a hell of a lot more difficult than it might look. So next episode, we're going to carry on. Um, we'll probably do whatever we can to get close to finish with this particular section of the station. We'll talk about other things that we plan on adding to the station. You can see here what those little struts started to look like. And there you can see now uh, what they look like when they're done. And it's, it's, I'm really happy with the way that it's working out because it's very subtle details, but they make sense. And they add, again, always looking for that little bit of extra visual interest. So if you want to be notified about the next and future episodes in this and other series, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.